what are we going to do with this bundled up, jumbled up mess of Christmas lights? We're going to make an antenna. Did you really need to ask me that question? We're going to make a long wire antenna that will work on all the amateur radio, the ham radio bands and frequencies with the use of an antenna tuner. Now, a couple of things to think about before we go any further. This is not a gimmick antenna. These lights don't work. I've disabled the lights. You'll see as we go through the video here that I've actually clipped off the wires and then crazy glued the connector and the light bulb back into the socket. So it appears that the lights are functional, but they are not. And I say that because we don't want to be sending RF downrange on this wire and have the lights light up to the inflection of our voice, which is what would happen on single sideband voice. We're not trying to draw attention to ourselves. We're trying to have a stealth antenna in the homeowners association. Some of you don't have the ability to ever get a wire antenna up. If your homeowners association allows for holiday lights, you can get a wire antenna up for a couple of months during the year. My homeowners association allows decorative lights year round so I can have this up permanent at my HOA. The second thing, this is not a discussion on whether or not people should or shouldn't live in a homeowners association. That's somebody else's channel and somebody else's video. If you wanna espouse your opinion about that, this video has nothing to do with that. If you wanna give us your opinion on how we can make a better antenna in these circumstances, comment away. And finally, there is no excuse for putting up a sloppy, poor performing antenna. Put up the best antenna you can afford, you understand how to use, and your circumstances allow you to. This is a thumbnail for the video that I did last year where I actually created this 20 meter dipole and put it up on the eve of our house. So it would be an inverted V and it worked fantastic. I didn't use colored lights, I used white lights and I took you through every step of that build process and we're going to actually build upon that. As a matter of fact, it was that antenna that I used to make this video. All of this footage was taken in February last year after the Christmas holiday had passed. I thought, well, let's take the dipole antenna. Let's join it right here at the middle, make it one wire. Let's take a nine to one un, -un and let's get up there and make a long wire at it. Let's just add a piece to the end of this and see how well that functions. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to take that footage from a year ago, actually not quite a year ago because I did the dipole in November of 2022. I shot the footage for the long wire in February of 2023, but let's talk about that. Let me show you what I did. Can't wait to show you the QSO at the end. The supplies I started with were my 9 to 1 un, -un some clips to hold my wires away from the roof. These clips will go underneath shingles. They will go over top of gutters. I have aluminum gutters, aluminum fascia, aluminum soffit. So I was trying to keep my antenna wire away from all of that metal. I then had just a couple of strings of lights that were already up in that dipole configuration. I also strung an individual wire, and this is what I considered to be my antenna. This is what I connected to my unun. And let me tell you the logic behind that. You, you may not say that uh, you agree with it. You may say that was not necessary. It's what I chose to do and let me explain why. You'll see in the video that I string up my antenna wire first and I attach it to all of my clips. I get it configured how I wanted. And then I went back over top of that wire and just laid this over top using these clips so that it would hide my wire and my antenna wire would become camouflage. Now, absolutely, there has to be some interaction of the RF between my antenna wire and these wires. That's a given. I actually used a tuner with my dipole because there was some interference. And remember, I have aluminum drip edge fascia and soffit. So metal everywhere, but I still made some awesome QSOs. The reason I chose to put an individual wire is because if I'm trying to get an exact length for my antenna, this wire here is so jumbled up the way that it's put together. If I took five feet of it and I really stretched it out and unwound it, do I have six feet? Do I have seven feet? I have no idea what I have. So I chose not to really use this as my antenna, but to put up an antenna wire and then use this as camouflage over top of it. That was the logic. Let me show you. 
you how I attach these wires under the shingles over the spouting. So you can see how I configured this, how I got the un, -un up there, and how I finished off with the final length of wire. The final length of wire I just used as this piece all by itself strung out across the one final section of my roof. I didn't feel like I needed to put this up there. You had already would have understood what I was trying to accomplish. So I took the easy way out and just finish off uh, the long wire with this. The best thing to do is to show the finished product. Then when I show individual segments, it'll make sense what I'm doing. Here's my coax connected to the nine to one, along with the antenna wire. Then the antenna wire joins up with the Christmas light string going up the eve of the house. At the very peak, you get a snapshot. My antenna wire came apart just in time for this section of the video, but it was together during the entire testing time. I go down the other side. Remember, this was my inverted V dipole. I make a hard left-hand turn here and I go back against across the, the balance of the roof to finish up my long wire antenna. I just threw it up there on the roof and put some clips on it and clipped it to the underside of the shingles. Let's just back up and get a look at this. It's a crazy configuration of any antenna, but it worked. It's not an excuse for a lousy antenna. It's the best antenna some people could get up and it works. I wasn't kidding when I said all of those wires were cut off. Every bulb was stripped off of these light strings and the copper leads cut off so they couldn't convey any RF. No electrical current could go through here. They were super glued back into this holder and then into the plug on each individual light string. They went with crazy glue. I told a little bit of a fib. I wasn't the one that did all of that. The XYL helped out with all of the crazy glue. Here I am demonstrating how we take those clips and put them underneath the shingles or attach them onto gutters they work very well for holding up the wires. This was the original installation of the dipole, and here you see me again using the clips and then just running the wire antenna. And I did this first before I put the light string on. Here, you're going to see me in a second. I take the actual holiday light string, the Christmas light string, and I put it over top of the antenna wire to completely camouflage what's going on here. That way, when the HOA looks at my house, what they see is what they expect to see, holiday lights. There's no question about what Bob has on his home during the holidays, or again, in my case, year round, because I'm allowed to have decorative lights, and it's why I chose white year round. Okay, it's time to convert the dipole over to the long wire antenna. I'm on the left leg of the dipole. It has a loop on the end of it that was used to keep it held down with one of those clips under the shingles. And now I'm just gonna take that loop. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to strip the outer shield off of that wire and I'm going to attach it to the LDG 9 to 1 un, -un. I don't use a radial wire here in this setup and there's no good reason not to. I just didn't. I think if this were a permanent installation for me, really I'm doing a demonstration here, not a permanent installation, I would have run a radial wire off of this. I still made great contacts without that, but I think you would be better served if you ran a ground wire. I'm also going to take this red un, -un and kind of stick it in the gutter so it becomes less conspicuous if anybody were standing far away from my house and potentially seeing this part of the roof. I'm going to zip tie it to one of the long uh, six inch threaded screws that holds the gutter in place. So let's get our coax attached here. Then you're going to see me take a zip tie and we're going to get it zip tied to the gutter and it's going to stay in place so I don't have to think about it moving while I'm testing it out here over the next several weeks. Next up, I'm just removing the dipole connector and I'm going to take those two lengths of wire, join them together as one with a wire nut. It's as simple as that. Again, this isn't a permanent installation for me. Were it a permanent install, I would have done a lot more weatherproofing and done this in such a way that it was permanent and could have withstood the test of time and the extremes of the weather, the heat and the rain and the wind that I have here in the Tampa Bay area. Now we're going to go to the back side of the house and on the back side of the house, I have the right leg of the dipole. There's the loop. It's just connected 
to that connector that's holding it to the shingles. I'm going to take that loop off, going to strip it down. And then I'm going to take my extra length of wire. Remember I said when I just finished off my long wire antenna, I didn't put any more Christmas lights there. I just took my final length of wire, threw it across the back of the house, stripped off this end and put it together with the right leg of my dipole with a wire nut. And that's all I did for the testing here. And again, it worked just fine for me. The only thing left to do is to get that final length of wire tied down and connected with our clips to the shingles, go back to the shack, turn on the radio and begin operating all the while being compliant with my holiday light decorations in the HOA. I started the channel as a way to help other ham radio operators think about the various ways that they can get on the air regardless of the circumstances they find themselves in. And I'm trying to create an environment where we can feed off of each other's creativity and ideas. Let's face it, someday when we're in a natural disaster or a man-made disaster, we're all going to find ourselves in less than ideal circumstances. So the more creative we can become and still get on the air locally, globally, or regionally, the better off we're all going to be. The channel's morphed into also doing a lot of reviews. That's been a lot of fun to do, and I hope that you're finding that useful. And I want to keep testing antennas like the one we're talking about today. The Patreons of the channel, I've taken all the funds that have come in since I created my Patreon account and purchased this Whisper transmitter, and I hope to be able to use it in future antenna tests to understand how well these creative antennas are working. For this particular antenna we're talking about, the only thing that I had available was to make a voice cue so to have a, a conversation with somebody on the bands and I'm demonstrating one of those cue so's that I had with the 14.300 net at the point in time that I did this cue so and I recorded it the shack was in transition the lighting wasn't set up in the studio the audio wasn't perfected in the studio and since I've done this video I've learned a lot more about how to use the lighting the cameras and the audio so my videos have improved in their quality so what I'm saying is this video is not the best quality, but it absolutely demonstrates how well this strange antenna worked. I hope you enjoy it. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, go ahead. Yeah, this is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. No traffic for the net, but I do have uh, two antennas up. I was wondering if you could give me a signal report on both. Over. I'd be happy to, Bob. You're in Palm Harbor, just a little bit north of my hometown in Florida. <laughs> QSL, QSL, beautiful weather here today. I'm on the first antenna. What do I sound like coming through? Sound just fine. You're about a uh, S8, S9, over. QSL, QSL, uh, S8. I'm po uh, picking you up at about a 5.7. I'm going to switch over to the other antenna now. Over. Go ahead, stand by. Okay, I'm over on my uh, NFED now. Uh, it's a 73-foot sloper. I'm wondering how I'm coming into the net now. Uh, you need to go back to the first antenna, then. Infed is not doing you a good job, over. <laughs> I am back to the uh, the first antenna. I certainly appreciate that input, friend. I'm always trying new antennas here in the Homeowners Association. And uh, thank you for the feedback. You guys are always great in how you offer advice, guidance, and take care of us all. Over. Well, we're all, we're all doing something we enjoy. That's, that's always a good plug. And uh, your first antenna, I don't know what time was it, uh, Bob, over. Well, the funny thing is, the uh, the second antenna is my station reference antenna. It usually works best for me. The antenna I'm on now is one that's actually lying on the roof. It's the weirdest configuration you've ever seen. Uh, it's 50-some feet long. It's it's following the eave in an inverted V and then finishes out the 50-some feet just laying flat on the bottom of the roof, uh, about uh, 10 feet off the ground. No one would ever expect it to work, but you're telling me it's the better of the two antennas today. Over. Well, today it is. Today it is, but, uh, and it's got a stronger signal also. So, uh, but uh, I I'm, uh, agree with you. It's, it's kind of weird, over. Compromised antenna? Well, sure it is, but it might be the best antenna you can get up. So don't let anyone tell you, ah, that'll never work. It might not be textbook, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a try. Hope you found this useful, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.